Howdy once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 747, part 3 of a four-part video series on making a hand wheel for the hardened speed lathe. So if you watched parts 1 and 2, you saw me make the drawbar, or I should say the drawbar tube, and thread internally in the second part. I use this 3D printed pattern to make finished castings, several different ones. And now I'm ready to start machining this, boring it, turning it, finishing it off. So let's begin, shall we? You might remember that I'm essentially copying the Sheldon hand wheel, the type that I had at the high school. It was just the right size and right shape. And again, thank you to Ted for making that 3D printed pattern for me. But this is what we're going to start with today. I'm working at the closing 12 inch lathe and I've already set the casting up in the four jaw chuck. And I've indicated it in at least as close as I can get it because castings are always somewhat irregular. But even at that, I'm within four or five thousand so that's going to be plenty good. Now take a look at the second setup here using the Noga indicator with the Sterrett indicator actually and I'm checking it on the face and I'm within about four or five thousandths there and again I had to tap it because it is just fluctuating or rocking just a little bit but I've got it tightened down nicely and I'm ready to drill and bore. You will recall that I formed this hole in the casting with a one inch sand core shown in the last video and I intend to bore it with the Alorus boring bar and this barely fits in a one inch hole so I'm going to drill it out just a little bit. I do not have a core drill so I'm going to use this inch and a quarter Cleveland two flute twist drill. Believe it or not this is the very largest drill bit that I own, at least that would fit in the lathe and you know kind of looks like somebody stirred paint with it. Maybe it came from the Navy, that looks like Navy gray. Okay, I'm all set up and ready to bore, and I need to bore it out to 1 and 3 eighths, which is the diameter of the drawbar tube. I'm at an inch and a quarter right now. Well, it's 10 minutes later and I'm within about five thousandths or so and I like to work up to my final dimension I want to be at uh, one three seven five and I want it to be just a slide fit with this I'm not going to press it I'm eventually going to use Loctite and I like to use my test piece as a, a sample here but also notice that the snout you want to call is that a snout is much longer than I need I will be facing that off about where my thumbnail is but the reason I always make things extra big because that way I can take trial cuts here and get the fit that I want and if I should go oversize it wouldn't matter because that very end piece is going to be taken off anyways do you understand what I mean just a little something that I do you know a tip for you might help you barely started so I'll take one thousandths more and go all the way through. Okay I took a couple more thousandths off and I'm getting a real nice fit. Very happy with that just a little bit of room in there probably for the Loctite itself. Alright, I'm arbitrarily going to remove one fourth of an inch. You can see my blue layout line.
make sure that your work is truly finished before you take it out of the chuck. Now I want to point out something before I do unchuck it. Is there such a word? That all castings have pattern draft on them. In other words, they're tapered. So I'm holding a taper in the chuck jaws. So I consider that castings are not held that tightly. So take light cuts and just be very careful. Also, you don't want to tighten your castings so tight that you crush them in case they are relatively delicate or hollow casting. So take that in, in, into consideration. Be sure and wear your safety glasses and work safely. Okay, out it comes. Yeah, that fits just nice. Now, you might say, how are you going to fasten that in there? And I'm going to tell you that I'm going to use Loctite. Obviously, I can't press it. You could press these, but I think you just have a lot of trouble later on in fitting them up because I still do not know what the overall length should be because obviously I'm going to cut this off. There's a thread in each end. I do not need that. I can't pin it by running a pin all the way through there because then that would block the tube if we wanted a whole long work in the lathe. So we could use set screws. In fact, I'm going to drill and tap a hole right now for a 5 16 18 set screw, but really it's only temporary to hold it onto a tube while I put this in the lathe, just like this, pretend my hand is the, ch is the chuck, so that I can turn the periphery and maybe face off the end, or that could be done later, but there's still a few more operations on here before the job is done. But it's starting to look like a drawbar, isn't it? Nice hand wheel. You could tighten it this way, but I am going to drill holes for the spanner. Well, you went to the refrigerator, I dial indicated in the work, so I'm within about a thousandth or less. Because I'm using the tubing now as a mandrel or an arbor. So now when I mount the hand wheel onto the tubing and tighten it down, I know that it's going to run true. And I'll just snug this up. I do not want to put a depression into the tubing such that it's very hard for me to get the wheel off of the tubing because it will be coming off again. Now I will turn down the periphery. If it runs true enough, I certainly do not want to have to do anything with the two sides. As cast, I hope, will be good enough. Well, that trued up nice, and I got a pretty decent finish. I'm not going to face this now. I will do that later and face off the tubing as well so that I got a perfectly flush end on there after I determine, again, the length of the tubing. So this part really is done now, other than facing that. If I had to design and make the pattern again, I would make this side just a little bit larger right here, because it's kind of a narrow rim. Not that it has any effect at all, but I think I would like the appearance of it a little, a little more. I'm over at the Bridgeport Mill, and the next thing I'm going to do to the hand wheel is to drill four equally spaced holes. I think they'll be three-eighths. I haven't decided yet. I better decide pretty soon for crying out loud. But I'm going to use the legendary Rose Index for that. And you might have seen me use this before. I will put the link in the description. And I have two of these. And they're made in two sizes. This goes up to one inch. But since the tubing is one and three eighths, I will be using the larger one. But the whole idea here is that I will drill 
one hole and then I will rotate this for a total of four holes. There could be any number of holes for that. One would do, or two, or three, but I'm going to make four holes for the spanner. So I will drill one and then rotate the work 90 degrees using the rose index and drill the next and so on. And this is the way the tubing is held in here. I don't even need a parallel. It's parallel. It fits just nice. As a matter of fact, I will use the bolt down there as a stop each time I rotate it. I don't need really any other kind of stop. If I was not butting up against that, I would need a stop someplace each time I rotate it. Remember, the rose index is not a holding device. It is a fixturing or indexing device. And you can uh, rotate your work and make four holes or six or eight or anything in between. This one even has a little protractor on it. This is the later model, the home model for the hobbyist that is made out of aluminum. It is quite affordable, a little bit cheaper than the other one, but here's how I'm going to use it. And that set screw has a brass tip on it there, so I will not mar the work. But I'll bring it in like that, and I'm going to snug it just a little bit like that, and then with the square, I will square it up. like that and tighten it. Let me take another view of that from the other end. This is a Sterrett 6 inch square. I suggest you use a precision square. You could use an angle plate here or just about any other way such that you could determine that this edge right here is perfectly vertical. So again I'll get it right up against. Make sure that is truly touching and then snug up the rose index like that. When you're making a setup like this it always helps to put white paper back there because you can be very accurate visually on determining whether you're touching in this case the fixture or a flashlight back there is fine. So now I've got this tight and I can remove the wrench and what I will do each time is drill the hole and then loosen the vise and rotate it 90 degrees like that. Gotta have the vise fairly loose but not too loose. The truck. And then tighten it up and I'm ready to drill the next hole. Are you understanding now how to use the rose index? Because this will be off camera most of the time. I, your attention will be drawn to me drilling or milling. I might use an end mill to mill those 3 8 holes. If you do not have a square, use an angle plate. I think they actually work a little better. And if the clamps are in the way, you might have to use a square depending on your situation. But this type also works real well. And since it'll fall off over here, I will reverse it like this. Make sure there are no chips or nicks or anything underneath your square or your angle plate for accuracy purposes. See how nice that works using an angle plate? Using an edge finder, I found the exact center of the work in this direction and I am exactly on the center looking in this direction. I'm going to plunge cut with a 3 8 end mill instead of a drill bit because I'll end up with a flat bottom hole so touching off such as that I have set my depth stop for exactly 3 8 deep as well. Hole number one And now index by 90 degrees. Tighten the vise and I'm ready for hole number two. 
hole number two. And indexing for hole number three, sometimes this set screw can interfere. And remember, I'm always pulling the work up against that stop. I know you can't see that, but you'll have to trust me. Hole number three. And now I am indexing for the fourth hole. And I love using this Taft Pierce angle plate. Much more accurate than we would ever need. And there we are. We could have got by with just one hole or two holes, but I went the full nine yards. Never remove your work from the machine until you are absolutely sure you are done with all of the operations. Take the rose index off, and that sure did work slick, didn't it? I hope you liked the video. Give me a big thumbs up if you liked it. And you can see how nice that's going to fit. Of course, the tube is way too long, so tune in for part four, where I show you how I'm going to cut it to length, put in the thrust bearing, and I will go ahead and machine the aluminum spanner, and the job will be done. Watch parts one and two if you have not already done so. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.